गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स नमस्कार यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग अस ऑन ई विद चैनल नंबर टेन एंड ऑन अवर यूट्यूब चैनल एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स गेट रेडी टू स्टडी एंड दिस सेशन इज फॉर क्लास टेंथ एंड द सब्जेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक टूडे इज इंग्लिश सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट दिस सेशन वी वॉन्ट टू शेयर अ इम्पॉर्टेंट अनाउंसमेंट विद यू Uh, we are proud that india assumed the g20 presidency and will convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in our history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding pragmatic solution global solution for the well being of all and on in doing so manifest the true spirit of vasudev kutumbakam or the world is one family so this was the important announcement and now we move to our session and the uh, session is for class 10 and the subject is english and to teach this subject our today's expert is dr amit ranjan sir welcome sir namaskar namaskar sir is ci uh, sir is from ciet ncert new delhi and the chapter uh, which we are going to study is lesson 7 poem the tree so we will do understanding and appreciation of tree before we start this session we want to uh, share our uh, various medium where you can contact us and you can send your feedbacks and your queries so you can contact us on our phone number that is 8800440559 and you can also email us on our email id that is dth.class10 @ciet.nic.in and apart from this you can also drop your messages your queries your question on our youtube channel that is ncrt official so let's move to uh, our expert and begin this session yes sir thank you very much um hello friends today we are going to discuss the poem the trees by um, adrian rich um adrian rich uh, is an um, american poet who passed away recently 10 years ago and she is one of the most important poets of um, Uh, the 20th century uh, one of the most important post war poets which means post second world war um poet uh, for her voice of uh, women for women's liberation for feminism and a lot of um, profound um, uh, thoughts she's one of the leading intellectuals of the um, 20th century very easily and um, it's a pleasure to have this uh, poem and to be introduced to uh, modern american poetry as well as modern feminist poetry So let us um, straight away have a look at the poem The Trees by Adrian Rich Um <clears throat> let's read the poem The trees inside are moving out into the forest The trees inside are moving into the forest the forest that was empty all these days where no bird could sit no insect hide no sun bury its feet in shadow the forest that was empty all these nights will be full of trees by morning all nights the roots work to disengage themselves from the cracks in the veranda floor the leaves strain towards the glass small twigs stiff with exertion long long cramped boughs shuffling under the roof like newly discharged patients half dazed moving to the clinic doors I sit inside doors open to the veranda writing long letters in which I scarcely mention the departure of the forest from the house the night is fresh the whole moon shines in a sky still open the smell of leaves and lichen still reaches like a voice into the rooms my head is full of whispers which tomorrow will be silent listen the glass is breaking the trees are stumbling forward into the night winds rush to meet them The moon is broken like a mirror its pieces flash now in the crown of the tallest oak so that was the poem um what do you think it is about kusum ji uh i think it's about the tree short sure. but um, and uh, i think uh, a woman uh, <coughs> men- mentioning uh, the tree uh, feeling attached to her and she want to say something Yes, it's a as you can see, it's it's not an easy poem. It's a mm. complex poem. It is about the trees, but it is not about the trees. Mm. Let us read it once more, and then we'll go line by line. 
um, <clears throat> and a poem should be read twice and only then the meaning starts to uh, emerge. Trees inside are moving out into the forest. Um, the trees inside are moving into the forest, the forest that was empty all these days, where no bird could sit, no insect hide, no sun bury its feet in the shadow of the forest that was empty all these nights, will be full of trees by morning. Let us look into these lines. So, the first line says the trees are moving out into the forest. So, which is very unusual um, that trees which are stationary are moving mm. like a fairy tale. It is mm. only in fairy tales that trees uh, walk around like in a Disney movie or something. And interestingly, a forest is full of trees, but the second line says the forest was empty all these days, mm. which means it is blank land. Why mm. is she calling it a forest? These are questions we need to think about. And in this forest, which was empty all these days, no bird could sit, no insect hide. Obviously, if there are no trees, there are no mm. birds and there are no insects. No sun bury its feet in shadow. So, um, the canopy of trees hides mm. the sun. Mm. When you are in a forest, you cannot see the sun. Sunlight. So, the sun mm. cannot bury its feet in the shadow. Mm. It is a very beautiful metaphor, the, the sun hiding behind behind the shadow, whereas the shadow is created due to the presence mm. of the sun. So, because the forest was empty, there mm. can be no birds, there can be no insects, mm. there can be no sun hiding, the sun will be blazing. Mm. The forest that was empty all these nights and see the juxtaposition also that we are talking about the sun, but the forest was empty in the nights, mm. because in the nights there is nothing, there is neither the trees nor the sun. But in the day, the sun cannot bury its feet in the shadow. And then she says, it will be full of trees by the morning. As you can see, it is not a regular poem, it is a very complex, um, this is in the modernist tradition. Um, so, the modernist tradition which students you will learn later in college is when um, writers and artists felt that they need to write according to their experiences, their dreams how the mind thinks and now how we, not how we report matters. So, you could say that I was in class, then I went to home, then I watched TV, this is the realist tradition. The modernist tradition is where you are thinking several things simultaneously and you report it like that, that is how our mind thinks. So, this is in the modernist um, tradition where there are very um, strong metaphors where one is imagining the trees moving out into the forest. But let us look into the second layer of meaning, knowing Adrian Rich as a feminist poet. A feminism is also a concept that you will understand a little later, though it is easy to understand where the whole idea is that women are equal to men and there is struggle to achieve that, and that it has been a long struggle in the world to achieve that. Um, and uh, Adrian Rich interestingly did not subscribe to the word feminism because labels often get dissipated. You say, you attach a label to something and it starts to lose its meaning after a while. And so, uh, she rather would use the term, she used to use the term women's liberation. Women's liberation um, from the shackles of patriarchy, from the oppression of men, from the oppression of the world, from the oppression of the tradition. Now, in view of that, let us look at the poem and um, look at women as trees. So, women who are trees because they are grounded, because in most parts of the world, including India, women were supposed to be inside the zanana, inside the women's quarters. They were not mm. allowed to interact with the men's world, they were not allowed to get education, they were not allowed to um, <coughs> participate in, in various public affairs, they were mm. confined to the kitchen and the women's mm. quarters. And so, they are like trees, their, their lives are like trees. Mm. Now, they want to move out into the forest, which is the world, mm. in a forest that was empty all these days. So, the forest had only one kind of trees till now, the men. Mm. And now, the women are moving into it, the mm. beautiful trees are moving into it. And so, the forest, despite the fact that it had vegetation, mm. it was as good as empty. 
And so she's also making a point that women's sensibility is very different from men's sensibility. Mm. That men have been fighting wars unnecessarily for thousands of years and war is glorified. Um, <clears throat> so very interestingly, I would like to tell you here about a um, novella called Sultana's Dream by Rokia Khatun from 1905, where men have locked themselves up inside um, a prison mm. because they could not fight wars against the enemy. And women fight wars not by using swords and gunpowder, but by deflecting sun's rays through a concave lens and the enemy runs away. And the women also, and in this women's world, there are no roads, there are only gardens and the helicopters which fl fly on solar energy. Women also work only two hours a day because men used to waste all their time gossiping and smoking. So, a similar sentiment that Adrian Rich is telling over here, it's in the women's world where the beauty is, where the birds sing and where the insects hide, where there is poetry. So this is poetry within mm. poetry. And so the forest till now mm. was empty of this poetry all this time because mm. forest is poetry, will be full of trees by morning. Mm. So there is hope that next morning when these women are liberated, when mm. they go out into the world, mm. there will be... <coughs> um, the forest will be singing with birds. Mm. Then the forest will be not empty and there will be birds Absolutely. and uh, insects. Absolutely. Let's, um, let's move to the next. Um, stanza. All nights the roots work to disengage themselves from the crack in the veranda floor. The leaves strain towards the glass, small twigs stiff with exertion, long cramped boughs shuffling under the roof, like newly discharged patients, half dazed, moving to the clinic doors. And it's very interesting how there is a transition from the world of the trees to the world of people where you see patients and clinic doors. Let's look at it line by line. <coughs> Excuse me. All nights the roots work to disengage themselves from the cracks in the veranda floor. Uh, there's a very beautiful line by um, um, the famous poet Leonard Cohen where he says there's a crack in everything and that is how the light gets in. Um, a very similar sentiment over here. That all these roots women who are rooted in their tradition, in honor of the society and so on and so forth. So there is a whole discourse that women are the honor of the society and therefore they need to be protected and so on and so forth and, and the world is made to believe in that. So we are rooted in that tradition, the women are rooted to being inside the home. And now she is saying that all night the roots work, which is about women's struggle which they have been going through for centuries to get voting rights, to get working rights, to get equal wages and so on and so forth. So the night is, is the metaphor of the darkness, the dark ages that women have been through. All nights the roots work to disengage themselves from the crack. And there are little cracks, there are little loopholes in every system. Mm. And these women will work through those cracks, the veranda flow. And look at the imagery of the veranda floor. It is concrete, it's cement, it's mm. difficult to break. Mm. No trees can grow on the cement. And so, uh, which is why on the concrete, in this concrete world of patriarchy, of um, a world ruled by men, women do not have the expression to grow. And which is why these roots are breaking free, like a people tree, how it uh, breaks through walls and, and establishes its own. Um, the leaves strain towards the glass. And the leaves go towards the glass. Why do they go towards the glass? Because sunlight is coming from there. And it is natural for a tree to go towards the sunlight. It's natural for any human being to be social, to have ambition, and so on and so forth. So the leaves strain towards the glass. This is a comparison. Like leaves go towards sunlight, mm. women of the world will also go towards their light. Small twigs stiff with exertion, and that is the struggle like twigs are exerting themselves to get to the light. Similarly, women are fighting mm. to get their equal rights. Long ramped boughs shuffling under the roof. So whatever 
means uh, the tree can employ to survive, to get its roots within the crack like a people tree, the leaves moving toward the sunlight, um, uh, swerving under uh, uh, the roof, like newly discharged patients, half dazed, moving to the clinic doors. And so now you see the comparison of the tree and how the tree is personified over here. The tree is like a patient, a newly discharged patient, half dazed. And so these women who have been suffering oppression for a long time, now finally are finding expression. Uh, they are moving towards some clinic, some, some place which will heal them um, and finally where they will find freedom. Let's look at the next stanza. I sit inside and you see um, there is a definite um, um, shift over here from the tree to I. Now mm. the poet is talking as herself, as a woman. I sit inside, doors open to the veranda writing long letters in which I scarcely mention the departure of the forest from the house. Now she's, the poet is talking about herself, um, sitting in the veranda and she's writing long letters. And this writing letters is also an important metaphor because at the time she's writing in mid 20th century, a um, hundred years before that, women were barely literate. Um, and would not write and here she is writing long letters and um, she does not say what these long letters are about uh, but she says in which I scarcely mention the departure of the forest from the house about the liberation of women over here. So in the long letters that she is writing to somebody, she is not writing about this silent revolution that is happening in the world of the women. Night is fresh, the whole moon shines in a sky still open, the smell of leaves and lichen still reaches like a voice um, in the rooms. And it's a beautiful metaphor of the night of, um, of very much like romantic poetry of um, John Keats or Shelley, um, where the moon is shining and the smell of leaves and lichen and moss and all that, the smells are like a voice uh, in the rooms. The smells of, of the forest are speaking to her like a voice. It's, it's a powerful a message that she's getting uh, from the forest. And so when the forest, uh, when, uh, so it's a very complicated metaphor where she's probably trying to say that when the women who were like trees have walked out into the world um, and there is smell of freedom where they can roam around at night um, like other people. Why is it that night uh, at night you find only men on the streets and, and not women? That's a very important question um, that we need to ask. Why, why doesn't the night and the moon belong to everybody? Why are women confined to their rooms at, at night and why are men allowed to roam around? Um, there is something horribly wrong with um, our civilization and that is what she is pointing out. And so very beautifully mixed up the metaphor between the closed room and the open spaces open space. and how open spaces are so important for women to reclaim that it should be a space which is equally inhabited by everyone. Let's look at <clears throat> the last stanza. My head is full of whispers which tomorrow will be silent. So she is getting a lots, lots of ideas, there is lots of dreams, there is lots of voices in her head telling her things to do which tomorrow will be silent. Um, and that is where you see the cynicism um, in and the uh, realism in Adrian Rich's voice over here, that even though there are visions, people have dreams, tomorrow will be silent because the world will silence them back into the system where they belong to. The world does not like to be disturbed. If there are women walking out in streets late at night, um, the world will be disturbed and they do not want that. And so these whispers will be silenced tomorrow. Listen. 
the glass is breaking and then she does a flip that the glass is breaking and she gets back to the metaphor of the tree leaves trying to reach for the glass and then the tree will eventually break the glass in trying to reach for the sunlight. And similarly, the women will break the glass ceiling. So, there is something called the glass ceiling mm. where um, women employed in an organization rise to a certain position, mm. let us say the vice president, but they cannot be the president. The mm. um, committee will tell that, oh, this lady is going to have a child or she has a child, mm. she cannot travel and this and that, so she cannot be made the president, etc., etc. So, there everybody has all kinds of excuses not to give the top position to the women. And you can Google and find out how many women presidents and prime ministers have been there in comparison to, um, to men. And yes. you can count them literally on, on fingers. This is the glass ceiling. But Adrian Rich is saying, listen, the glass is breaking slowly. As, as the, the silent revolution, as women are expressing themselves, as they are reclaiming their right and rightly so, because the society can function to its optimum only when its entire population participates and, and not just half of it and half of it is relegated to the back door. So, the glass is breaking, she is saying, the glass ceiling. And why is it a glass ceiling? Because um, it does not appear like a ceiling, it is a false ceiling. You think you are rising. And there is something transparent, but it will block you from getting to the sky. Mm. And she gets back to the tree metaphor. The trees are stumbling forward into the night. Winds rush to meet them. So, the trees are going into the night mm. to, um, to join the world and the winds rush to meet them. And wind is, is um, let us say, whisper of time. Mm. It is history. Uh, it is this moment where the winds are supporting these trees, these women in their effort. The moon is broken like a mirror. Its pieces flash now um, <clears throat> in the crown of the tallest oak and which is a very dense metaphor at the end, difficult to um, <clears throat> understand. Uh, but the moon which has been uh, representational of uh, many things. One, the moon is Luna. Um, the word lunatic comes from Luna, which mm. means um, our moods are affected by um, moon, the movement mm. of moon. And women have been called hysterical, mad, historically, uh, their mood swings, um, and they have been called lunatic that the moon's movement is affecting them. And so, the moon is also a very male centric symbol. Um, <clears throat> so, the moon is broken. That moon. The symbol of moon constructed by men is broken like mirror and in multiple mirrors and each of those mirrors will show that these trees are moving into the forest. So, it is a spectacular image of um, thousands of trees moving into a forest and various parts of the moon which are reflecting that and that image being reflected everywhere. <coughs> um, its pieces flash now in the crown of the <coughs> So, um, that um, was Adrian Rich's um, poem and it's, as you can see, it's a very powerful poem which very combines the uh, mm. world of nature and the world and it's not just about uh, women. It, I interpreted it as that because she was a powerful um, a voice for a po poem can be interpreted in many ways. Mm. Many people who are marginalized like um, Mm, like black people in America or various other minority communities across the world who are op oppressed. They all um, have a message in this of, um, of being inspired um, for their struggle. And it is also a message for the oppressor to be, um, to be inclusive, to be kind, to uh, make a forest which is beautiful, which has all kinds of elements and which is how um, harmony will be um, developed. Um, a little bit about Adrian Rich before uh, we close this. Uh, Adrian Rich is from uh, was from Baltimore, Maryland, uh, in America, in North America, and um, initially um, uh, she uh, grew up uh, writing poems which were rhymed, metered, in form, and um, she uh, was inspired by Keats and Yeats, um, and uh, also. Uh, other romantic poets, 
but this is her later poetry where she broke free from those um, conventions and wrote this very image driven imagistic um, poetry which is um, um, very powerful and as i said earlier uh, she is one of the foremost poets of um, uh, america and the world in the second half of 20th century this poem is also inspired by robert frost's birch but um, um, you should reach robert frost's um, birch also to understand this poem but this has a very distinct flavor um, robert frost also um, compares the tree to the heart and and the weight on the heart that is created by pressures of of the world um, but this is um, more um, revolutionary um, let's say yes sir uh, this was very beautiful poem with a beautiful lines and a powerful message and Absolutely. you explained this uh, poem uh, to our learners and students very well sir uh, thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you so much so dear students and learners it's time to wind up this session but before we wind up this session we want to share a important announcement with you uh, we are proud that india assumed the g20 presidency and will convene the g20 president leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it as it seeks to play a very important role by finding pragmatic global solution for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest a true spirit of vasudev kutumbakam or the world is a one nation so this was the important announcement and dear students and learners it's time to say goodbye and to wind up this session so take care and don't get, uh, go anywhere uh, stay connected to e vidya channels so Thank you so much. Namaskar.